what's up hello it's lit life with miranda reads and i'm your host miranda reads <laughs> So today we're going to be talking about queer books, LGBTQ plus books. And I originally had a list of like 40-ish books, which I narrowed down to 20-ish. And then I noticed that there was a theme. Ones that I just loved and I was there for it. And ones that I loved and I grew from it. So I split these into two videos because honestly, they're both so good. They're both equally amazing books. It's just different ways they came into my life. So that's what I'm gonna be talking about today. So more so adventure, more so lighthearted, more so fun kind of books. Okay, so we're gonna get maybe a little bit spoilery with some of these books I'm talking about today. And that's just because we're gonna be talking about the specific aspects of it that I like and how the LGBTQ plus relationship is such a, is a prominent role. So just kind of be aware that there may be some minor spoilers. So we're gonna start off with one of my absolute favorites. And then honestly, it hasn't been out that long, but it just like shot to that top of my list immediately. Like it's one of those books where like the relationship, like the moment the two characters like lock eyes, you're like, yes, I am on this ship. And this ship, if it doesn't sail, I'm gonna cut someone. <laughs> And I'm talking about Red, White, and Royal Blue. In this version of the US, we have a divorced woman from Texas as our president. So her son, Alex Claremont Diaz, is the first son. And he just so happens to be kind of questioning, kind of by maybe gay. He's not entirely sure at this point. Across the pond, we have Prince Henry, which is Alex's I guess mortal enemy in the way that you know they're kind of gonna get up together. <laughs> During a wedding, Alex and the prince cause a kerfuffle, essentially. And in order to solve it, or at least make the impact minimum on the country, they are told to fake a friendship. However, the more they fake that friendship, the more that friendship becomes real and the more that they realize some sparks are starting to fly. So this one is a super cute contemporary romance. I absolutely loved it. I was like freaking out as I was reading it because I enjoyed it so effing much. So I highly, highly recommend this one. I cannot recommend it enough. Please just go out and read it. And we're gonna go from something super happy, super fluffy, to like dark and brooding. <laughs> so I'm talking about the Nevernight trilogy. Now this one is a slower burn and the romance is not the forefront of the book. The forefront of the book is survival. And however, the romance develops over time became such a huge part of the book and it honestly eclipsed the rest of it. So like it's definitely belongs on this list. So the Nevernight trilogy focuses on a world where there's literally no night. There's three rotating suns and a lot of the people gain power through the sun's light. Our main character, Mia, gains power from the shadows. Her family was murdered by like, the religious order and then also like kind of like the rulers of her place. Because of that, she has vowed revenge to the nth degree. And Mia, she's, she's not some fluffy little girl, she will literally go out and murder people to death. <laughs> okay, you get what I mean though. Just this whole book is just one intense event after another. And it's so much that she starts to lose her humanity. However, there is one girl in this book. This one girl is the one that she has connection to, she has genuine friendship with. And it just, it takes you by surprise and it takes you, it just kind of like, is such a gentle thing to her hard exterior of a character. It really uplifted the book and it made the series so good. I honestly loved that series. It was so good. I really cannot recommend it enough. So next one is Girl Man's Up. And this one, okay, so I do admit that the parents in this one were a little bit over the top 
but the rest of it I absolutely love. We follow Penn and she's always been a tomboy. She doesn't feel like she wants to present herself as a girl. She doesn't feel non-binary. She doesn't, she just doesn't want to label herself. So it's a huge, huge deal when she tries to tell her mom that she doesn't want to look like what her mom wants her to look. She luckily has a brother who helps cut her hair short in one of those like really cute boy cuts, but also like not a boy cut. You know what I mean. But she gets her hair cut like that. She ends up finding a girl who she really, really likes. I really loved the way she kind of comes out almost to herself with who she is, who she loves, and how she wants to be and how to feel comfortable in her own body. I really, really like that one. It's a really lovely contemporary book. And I originally said I wasn't going to do this where like the gay character is the side character, or the queer character is the side character, because I feel like that is a bit of a cop out most of the times. Because, you know, it's so easy, I feel, for authors to just say like, you random side character, you are gay, look at how inclusive I am. You, you get what I mean though, right? Where it's just like, yeah, you did it, but you really didn't commit to it. So I kind of debated about whether putting this book series on the list, but in all honesty, I feel like the author did commit of a side character has really kind of took over the book for me. So it belongs here. So The Raven Boys focuses on Blue, and she is the only non-psychic in a family of psychics. Meanwhile, we have Gansey, Ronan, Adam, and Noah, and they are the Aglin, Aglin B boys. <laughs> they are the Aglin B boys. They belong to the super rich prep school. Gansey is rich, and he somewhat embraces it, but not in like a jerk way. Ronan is rich, and he like kind of like throws it all off to the side. So he's a jerk, but not because he's rich. Adam is there on scholarship and he's desperate to try and hide how poor he is and his home life. And Noah, he's a little bit like just kind of the friendly person of the group. And she ends up meeting these four guys and they get into like this huge plot. And it actually is just so much to it that I, I could just spend hours here talking to you all about the intricacies of this plot. But essentially, it starts strong, it keeps rolling, keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger until the very end where you're left going, whew, oh my gosh. You find out a little bit later in this four book series that Ronan is gay and that he has a crush on Adam. And the two of them kind of dance around each other, but in like a really sweet way, especially considering Ronan's super tough exterior and Adam's desperate need to hide his vulnerability. I love, it's just like pinch me, I'm dreaming. It's so cute. And I just, I got so invested in their relationship that they cease becoming side characters to me. So again, this is a four book series. So it's a little bit more of an investment, but I loved it so much. Okay, so next up we have Carry On by Rainbow Rollo. Now, Carry On is, it takes the premise where Harry Potter and Draco Malfoy, but they're together. <laughs> so for Carry On, it's a little bit of a steep climb into this series because we start off at the last book. It's as if we had started at Harry Potter number seven. Ever since they've been at the school, their little magic school, Simon and Baz have been butting heads like crazy. And Simon is just, he has this like obsession with Baz and he's like, Baz is evil, Baz is a vampire. He ended up being right. And Baz is always needling Simon. Simon, his anger and his mistrust is just kind of more so a crush. And Baz has been smitten for a long time. So the two of them come together in Carry On. And it's such a lighthearted moment in a somewhat serious situation that you really just like, yes, thank you. Now the second book, Wayward Son, is Simon, Baz, their best friend Penelope, go on a road trip in America. And that one is just literally just going out there and having an adventure. 
and it ends up being quite a fun book. A lot of people were kind of upset because there wasn't a huge big bad. It was just like kind of on a road trip. But for me personally, I loved all of the Snow Baz moments and it was just such a fun uh, look into their lives. So I definitely recommend the Carry On series. Just keep in mind that the magic system, you're thrown into the book as if you have read the previous seven or eight books in this series. But as long as you kind of keep an open mind, you can kind of catch up rather quickly and then enjoy the series. This one is a little bit older than YA. So in this book, we follow two storylines. One focuses on a Hermione-esque girl in a society where they're like, yeah, but you're a girl. So you really shouldn't be doing so much magic. We're just gonna kind of subtly edge you out of society. Meanwhile, and this is a queer part. Whew. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna like lay down some troll society for you right now and like just kind of bear with me. So in this world, trolls look very much like human males. And Tazara, our main character, is a female biologically troll, but she appears very masculine. She's very muscular and she also acts very masculine as well. Now in troll society, they don't have strict gender roles. They have a kind of like a dominance thing. So if you're a more dominant person, you tend to take on what humans would see as a male role. And if you're a more submissive person, you take on what the humans see as a female role. She feels like she should be one of the dominant trolls. However, her size and her magic ability places her in the submissive. So she decides to kind of set off on her own and see what life has to offer. She stumbles into Jekran and he is a soldier who was um, ambushed and he kind of took a run for it. He's very injured. She takes him in and the two of them form like this really, really sweet relationship. The actual plot of the book focuses on Tassara, Jekran, and they're seeking a way to figure out who's killing the trolls and how to stop them. Um, I absolutely loved the dynamic between those two characters and the way they had to fight against society because human society really looked down on Jekran for finding such a male presenting partner. But Jekran was an absolute sweetheart about it and Tassara was such a intimidating person about it. But the thing is like the two of them against the world really took this book to a whole new level for me. This is a little bit older than YA, so there are some a little bit more difficult concepts. It's a little bit friskier as well. But the relationship between Jekran and Sara, it made me want to hug the both of them and want like a six book series where they're just running around the countryside doing whatever they feel like, you know? And uh, it was definitely one of my favorites from last year. It was such a fun book and it was such an enjoyable book. I have two more books for you. They are not out yet, so this is more of like letting you all know what books to put on your radar. The first one is called Cinderella is Dead. So in this world, Cinderella was a real person who died years and years and years ago. Her story lives on. Also in this world, you have three chances to get married, you're invited to the king's ball, and if you don't find a husband by your third chance, you have to essentially go to the dungeons and people never hear from you again. Sophia has always known that she does not want a husband, she does not want to go to the king's ball. She also has always known that she's loved girls. She's also in love with Aaron, a sweet girl who is too afraid of the consequences to really do anything to rebel. On the night of her very first ball, Sophia offends someone and she's forced to flee for her life. As she's fleeing, she meets Constance. Now Constance is a descendant of Cinderella's family as one of the stepsisters. And together they start to try and unravel the original Cinderella tale and hopefully to separate the truth from the fiction. Now I don't wanna to give too much away because obviously it isn't out yet, but I personally really enjoyed this story. I loved the way that finding out new information about the Cinderella tale completely changed how I interpreted it in the past. It was also really fun to have a gay Cinderella story out there. 
and I absolutely loved the dynamic between Constance and Sophia. Now I do have to say and this seems to be like the major issue that I'm seeing other reviewers calling the book out on. The society is very much against women and it's to the point where it's like it's so over the top that it's, it just feels a little bit ridiculous. So you do have to have a little bit of suspension of belief when you first come into the story. But once you just kind of like accept that, the true story shines through and it becomes one of my favorite retellings. All right, the next one is one that I literally read last night and I am so obsessed. I literally, ah, it just makes me so happy. <laughs> so we're talking about Cemetery Boys. Bruhex is, um, they're essentially ghost witches <laughs> where the males can put spirits to rest and the females can heal people using blood magic. We follow Yadriel and he knows in his soul that he is a brujo. However, his father thinks that he needs to be doing bruja magic. And even though Yadriel has made a somewhat transition where he's presenting himself as male, he's using male pronouns, he is still not male enough for his father to agree to go through the coming of age ceremony. After waiting a very long time, Yadriel and his cousin, Maritza, decide just to go ahead and do it anyway. He goes through the ceremony, he ends up getting Lady Death's blessing, which means he's a brujo. However, it's not enough evidence for himself, so he decides that he has to finish up the ceremony, which includes raising a spirit and then putting them to rest. And he ends up calling up Julian, and Julian is the bad boy of the school. After getting over the shock of accidentally calling up literally his classmate, Yadriel is like, all right, I am going to put you to rest. And Julian's like, yeah, nah, I'm not cool with that. And sparks their adventure as they try and figure out what happened to Julian. Ah, okay, so I don't want to give away too much because it isn't out yet. And I just kind of did like the beginning of it. But oh my gosh, I loved it. it. It was so cute the way Yadriel and Julian kind of circled each other in this book. I also adored Yadriel and his struggle was beautifully written out. The way Julian rounded out their dynamic made for the book a very fun read and a very, and a very enjoyable read. Okay, so then that's it. Thank you so much for watching. My next video, again, it's gonna be about books that really impacted my understanding and changed my understanding of the world. And those ones are gonna hit a few more niche groups than today's list. If you have any suggestions, I would absolutely love to hear them. Put them down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and happy reading and happy crying.